All right, what's up, guys? I'm turn off this really quick before we go into shenanigans mode. Looks like I'm live on both things. What's up? What's up? D's Knicks. Hello, hello. Let's see. I gotta pull this closer or get like some reading glasses, I think. Carlos, what's up, man? So tonight's kind of uh, it's kind of a fun night. Um, the bugs are not going to be crazy over the top technical. Obviously, this is Loon Live. You guys tuned in somewhere. Um, we have some cool new stuff to work and play with and talk about. Um, Firehole Outdoors, what's up, man? Never mind. <laughs> okay. Tomahawk Fly, what's up, man? Crange77, what's up, what's up? Nate, hello. It is me. Um, so, new background new materials, new stuff to play with here, um, and uh, we'll kind of go through some of the stuff as, as we tie the fly, and uh, I'll explain it to you guys. So I think tonight, really what I want to start out with is a um, little Pertagon creature, and for that, I'm going to tie this big, uh, just to forewarn you guys, and not that you really need a warning on the size of the fly, um, but you know, you can tie these in a ton of different sizes and shapes and stuff like that. So, um, what we'll do is I'm going to sneak in here. What happened to my... There we go. Um, I'm going to sneak in and we will try to get my face out of the way. And go from here. Let's see here. Let me see if I can center this up a little better for you guys um and we'll track in this is a little bit of a whoop, smaller fly but overall should work we'll make it happen zoom in so if you guys aren't watching on youtube you got a lot better a lot better view over there so we'll hop into the fly here um so in the vise, I have a 3.8 mil tungsten slotted bead. This one has copper in color. Um, and I'm going to see if I can't pinch in on this guys for you guys too. Let's see if I can not zoom. It's not going to let me zoom tonight. I don't know why. But uh, let me see if I can work on that here. Got to do a little bit of bending. Looks like a regal. It is a regal. I tie on a regal. You nailed it. So, had a good, good question. Oh, Daniel, it's more than warm for me, man. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can get this just a little bit closer, guys. Trying to adjust things here. Apologize. More than warm, brother. It is downright hot. Alright, so that should be pretty decent. Um, like I said, YouTube's going to have, literally your whole screen will be half a hook. Um, which is cool. So yeah, more than hot. I think it was like 108 today. Stoked. Um, <laughs> so I'm using some Vivas 50D and that's just going to be our thread base here. So I got a great question this week and I figured it was worth talking about and explaining a lot of my philosophies. So I got asked a question by a viewer, why do I put my, my wing cases on the back side of my flies? And the simple question for that is, uh, I like the hook gap, and I have spent a lot of time being bored and snorkeling in rivers and observing fish. And I've noticed that 90 90% of the time, at least in the rivers that I fish, no fly or bug goes down the river looking like Superman. So, McDermott, what up, buddy? What up? Um, so, by doing that, even though this is a jig hook, it is designed to ride hook point up, it's still going to cavitate and, and pop around, make moves, and that's not a bad thing. So if I can increase the hook gap for those fish that eat this, it's positive for me. 
So I put in just a little Coq de Leon tail. I like my tails a little bit longer. I think it helps the fly to swim. Curtis, what's up, what's up? And that's my personal opinion. Uh, I think it helps them just move around a little bit more in the current. Catches more current, more movement, more struggle, more eats. You, you know, it's adding automation to something that's uh, obviously not alive. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of stuff here and somewhere in here is the one I want. So there's a, there's a couple ways to do these quill bodies and it really just depends on what's available and you know these little hand strip quill things are pretty cool. They're pretty expensive. Um, so that's one option. I do use those a lot. Um, and then there's also these cool little tapered, I'll show you guys the front here, tapered synthetic quills. Um, camera angles are in different spots depending on where you're at. F f the phone is having trouble. Yeah, phones are bad like that, especially on, on third-party live streams. If you want to see, uh, you know, full HD video of it, go hop over to YouTube on our YouTube channel from our website. And that actually, we have three camera angles there, so you'll, you'll get a lot better, a uh, lot better version of this video. Instagram's great, YouTube Live's pretty mellow too, just so you know. Um, but yeah, the camera tries to focus on everything that's moving or a shirt in the background and it just becomes kind of a bugger. Could be the bobbin too. The bobbin does get out of control for me. I'm trying to keep the, I uh, have the capability to keep the focus where I want it, but it doesn't seem to really want to do that. That's a lot of cameras. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use this little synthetic quill tonight. And these are cool because they're, they're fairly easy. They're nice and thin. You guys can see they come off. They're adhesive. They're going to stick on really well. And then I'll show you guys a really cool hack in case you have no clue or have never seen either one of these two products. Um, not the exact same effect. Um, I'm going to steal from fly fish food here, but that'll be all right. Man, it really doesn't like the fly tonight. Likes my hand. So you can see once you start wrapping this guy on there, you get a really, really cool looking quill body that's going to be incredibly durable. And I'll do a few extra wraps up front here just to make it work. Now this is a crimson, it's a darker red. And it's a nice, it's a nice color. Chile, what's up? Got you on the YouTubes. Tell us more about the bobbin. Um, it's a bobbin. It's called the all-purpose bobbin. And you'll be able to get one soon enough. Um, so there's a few cool things that we'll, we'll share tonight. And uh, so this is the first one. We'll see if we can get it to focus here. I wonder if I just point it down more if it would focus better. No. It likes my face. So this is, uh, and I'll show you guys a quick trick here. I mean, the fly is pretty much at the done position for this specific, you know, these little competition style nymphs are, um, are pretty fun to tie. They're really quick. Arkansas, man, I would love to, brother. Um, if you see my travel schedule and you can find time for me, that would be awesome. So this is a new product that we've been working on, and it's uh, it's pretty. We're pretty stoked. We're pretty proud of it. Uh, environmentally friendly, still, you know, not gonna be super bad for you to work with. Still low smell. This is a brown UV resin, and I'll show you guys a cool trick. 
if you struggle with getting those cone shapes. Since gravity traditionally sucks, you can cure your bug in a vertical position and you'll get more of that taper look. So it'll give you a really cool look there. So you can see you get this, the red almost becomes this darker brown kind of colored body. And I just kind of work back and forth. Oops, that was not what my intended purpose was. And if you want a little extra build up here at the front, I'll just go ahead and drop my resin in right around the collar area. And you can just work nice and slow around. And it's just going to make just a nice little ramp up. And you can invert it and let it, it's going to suck back out, creating more of that taper profile. So there's far less work to be done there. Yeah, it's 105 degrees and I'm drinking hot coffee. Just, it's the only way I drink coffee. And I drink coffee all day. Um, so the, the next kind of fun one is this guy right here. And this is our new hot orange resin. So it's far more opaque than previous, and you guys can see it just glows like crazy. Um, most of these resins are best done. All of the colored resins that I've got to play with over the years um, is best done in smaller shots and just some control. So you guys could go and do a black wing case. This new colored UV resin system is going to be coming in 17 total colors, which... Uh, no horse head tonight, Chris. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, but you can see, you can you can spice this thing up any way that you like it, any color way that you like it. It's a really, really fast pattern. It's easy to tie and gets the job done. UV clear compared to good old Loctite super glue. So they're very different. Um, so it's it's not really a comparable product in my in my head. Um, and it's a good question. Loctite works great, but it doesn't give you that glossy finish. Um, at least for me, it doesn't. Um, it it's a it's a little bit different of a product. So um, you know, I can you could use that to bind down. Coating it, it typically leaves a white film. UV resin is going to be higher gloss, stuff like that. Um, so it would play out differently into as far as uh, where I would use it on the fly and for different applications. Don't get me wrong, I still use a ton of super glues uh, for various things. I was using it earlier. My buddy's going to uh, BC this year uh, to you know, skate up some steelhead and on um, the Skeena system I believe and he was I'm sitting there on the Bluetooth talking to shops doing work and tying some skaters and I use it to hold stuff down you did not miss the stone I'm gonna show you actually I'm gonna take this this thread off because I don't want this thread you did not miss the stone fly the stone fly is next so don't worry I thought I didn't bring the materials for the stone fly which I think is just kind of like what I do every time I tie flies, right? So I'm going to switch my bobbin, and this is uh, this is still uh, GSP. This is just a 200 version. Same same strength at the whip finish. If you allow UV resin to coat in, depending on your thread, yeah, you should be pretty darn good. Um, that's all I use for head cement right now. I'm probably the most impatient person in the world. Um, so I just use our flow on the head, let it soak in, hit it with the light for 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. I don't have flies come apart on me. After a few whip finishes and that, you're golden. Um, and that's even steelhead flies. So I'm going to take some more of this little uh, Coq de Leon. Actually, I'm not going to use Coq de Leon because the guy asked me as well. Another This is, this is question night. So guy asked, there's a lot of cool materials used on here. 
which I was like, yeah, I like I like fly tying materials. Um, and what if they don't have access to them? So this is uh, this tail is just going to be a schlappen feather. This is just happens to be a brown schlappen feather. Um, you know, it's an easily obtainable. Most every fly shop has it, just because it's been in the mix for. Um, you know, let me. Actually, I cheated there. I got ahead of myself. Um, old bobbin squeak. Um, so I'll show you what we're gonna do here. So what I'll do is I'll take, now we'll take the schlappen now that I have the long tag end available. And we'll just create our body with this. When we get up front here, we can just pull. Typically it'll pull off all the way. Uh, yeah, you know, if you need to get out of it, uh, you know, and your truck's stuck, you pull out 200 D GSP. It was just the next size up I have in GSP. Um, I typically only tie with the 50. <laughs> so for me, finding another thread of, uh, you know, spool of thread was uh, a little tricky, we'll say. So if you guys have seen fly fish food and you want to kind of get that cool quill effect, um, I'm just going to use a Sharpie here. So I take a nice dark color like black and then I'm going to use a like a Copic sketch marker. This is a little bit of a darker brown and I'm just going to coat all of the thread up. And then what I'll do, so this is their uh, this is their big uh, this is what they did on the mill spec. So you can get that body segmentation and you know if you don't have access to something this is like this is like uh, the easiest Pertagon fly ever you know at this point you could use a clear UV resin if you wanted to you're not going to get the hot spot but and this is going to darken up significantly more but little brown mayflies catch a lot of fish too so if you like again if you wanted to drip down and make an upside down ice cream cone you can kind of massage that up towards allow gravity to do its work like I tell everybody all the time UV resin is no way a timed event um. <laughs> Mr. Wyco what's up brother how are you so I'll go ahead and cure here try not to shine this in your guys eyes because that's not cool and not nice And then we can come in and do our hot spot. Now I did change my hook on this just so you guys can see a, a different. And if you cure your UV resin, that's bad. And then if you grab the wrong color, that's also mildly bad amongst our crew. Nice. I want to watch some Joker tie flies too. So you can get these cool little hot spots. Um, you know that's a really down and dirty uh, version of a, like a Euro style nymph, and it works super super well. Um, does a good job, and it's not going to break the budget or make you go out and buy, you know, 200 new materials. Although new new materials are fun and they are inexpensive. Um, so this is actually a little Ahrex little hook and just a brown bead. Um, it's going to get the same point across to the fish. Maybe not as snazzy looking, but you know, it's just a variation in case you guys need that. Now, this is a now this is a very unusual hook. There's only one of these out there, and it's a long shanked. Well, Gregulator, it's a brand new thing out with a mini bobbin. <laughs> Uh, this this is our kind of our mini bobbin, so it's coming. You just gotta be a little bit patient. They're gonna pop out here in a few weeks. Um, there's some other cool stuff up right now on the Loon website. Actually, um, we just launched a new zinger for you guys who love zingers. Comes with an S beaner, and I mean it's a strong little zinger. 
uh, pretty killer. It's like 12.50 or 12 bucks. And then uh, we also launched the big Amandu patch recently, which if you guys didn't know, it's actually a tremendously good fire starting agent. Um, so you dry guys, you know, get your flies in there and uh, take care of it. You gotta go to work, take care. Well, that's a weird time to go to work. Uh, Uh, Mac, yeah, if you, if you put it in a, a vertical position, no, uh, gravity sucks. So, uh, um, uh, but you know, I don't, I don't really notice it a ton. The only thing I put on, there's a little caps and I put those little caps on, um, because typically what I find is just right in the end of the, the tube is where I end up zapping it with the light and then I zap my tube of resin. Um, but, uh. Yeah, the colored stuff should be on its way to stores here pretty quickly. We're, it's, uh, we just finished production and production samples, so it's, there's a lot of new stuff coming. There's lots of Easter eggs in, these, in this video. So I'm just taking this Vivas 50 all the way to the back. Yeah, the, the, the colored's not in the stores yet. It's going to be very soon, and the availability will be that of all Loon products, which is you order it, and it ships to your store the next day. So this is just a little uh, leading wing edge from a turkey. I think there's a couple goofy ones in here, so I'm going to have to kind of dig through them. There we go. Although the kind of non-good pointy ones might be great for a stonefly tail, because stoneflies um, kind of have little short stubby tails. So you can see what I've done here is I just basically uh, oppose these against each other. Fly Alexis, hello, hello, and welcome. So what I'll do here is we'll just tie those in. And I, I don't really stress out a ton about where these go. I'll let them wrap around and kind of just create the a base layer for this body program. And these guys can just kind of pop out. Doesn't matter where they're at. Again, you know, if you want to tie for Instagram, that's cool. But fishing flies, like sometimes the dumbest looking ones are the best ones. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Claret? What? <laughs> All right. Chris Morris? Cool. Yeah, I have all sorts of tricks on the YouTube side of things. So this is some gold wire. And I'm just going to hold that in place there. And then I'm going to use some brown wire. These are both uni wires. And I'm just using a medium. So I'm going to put one on top of the other and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. So they're both running down the side of the shank. Um, reason for that is it's going to help me create a little bit of a wider body. I can kind of hide it and it's just the way I do it. I think it's because I tie a lot of steelhead flies on return eyed hooks in the past and those, that's where you run all your stuff to get a nice even body because the hook's uneven otherwise, at least to me. So I'm going to take these guys and I just create my body spacing here. So it's not, we're not tying a copper, John, and I don't care how the body spacing totally pans out 100%. Um, again, I want to be able to crank these flies out really quick for guiding or, uh, you know, personal fishing, whatever it may be. So make sure that wire is really secured in there. Logan, what's up, man? Same as fishing guides. <laughs> so, 
So, cool. Let's make sure this will be cleared. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is going to be some of our UV fly finish in yellow. And I worked really hard to, to nail these colors close to what I wanted to tie with um, and not be just dorky. Hey, there's a yellow. That's great. It's like I wanted a stone fly or a yellow Sally yellow for my, you know, material. And you can see there we can start by building a cool little body. And you can kind of adjust the resin where you want it. And doing multiple coats is fine. It doesn't take very long. 15 seconds. Sharpen. Mac, you gotta go to YouTube. You're gonna What's my process to sharpen my scissors? It's a really expensive machine, um, if I'm being completely honest. So it's a series of uh, various grits, if you will, and that is how we sharpen scissors, um, much like sharpening a knife. And it's done by hand here in the United States by real Americans with names. Uh, but yeah, we just used various grits on, on, a, on a kit that we've developed. Tried to make a mouse fly and it looks like oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, I've been very busy this year. So you can see now we have this cool gelatinous body for this little stone fly pattern. And I'm actually gonna work the thread back up and I'm gonna let it build. Um, and you can tie these anywhere from I mean I don't even care if you tie a size four. Uh, most guys don't fish size for golden stones, but I like to. They can see it, and so can I, so it's a good thing. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I am tying a stonefly and drinking coffees. So one of the cool new things that we came out with here, and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys from a top view down, um, on YouTube is this uh, bench ring system. If you guys have seen how I organize my materials, I cut slits in the corner and I can pull my dubbing out. So let's say if I want to pan through here and find my ice dub browns, you know, my yellows, um, this is going to hold them all kind of together. And this is just like my ice dub ring. Um, so they come three to a pack, small, medium, and large and they're only like eight bucks and they're just uh, nice solid stainless wires that I use to hold all my hooks, tools, um, basically everything. So once I have my ice dub out here what I'll do is I'll just start I'll start mixing it and um, you know if you want a little bit more brown in there we can add that and I do like having some natural fibers it helps makes me feel good so this is a uh, Hair's Ear Plus, this is kind of an olivey brown color, but it creates a really awesome, juicy looking dubbing. If you're doing larger batches, I recommend getting like a carding system. Fly Fiend, what's up, man? Yes, that's the new yellowish. Yeah, that is the new yellow resin. Sorry, I see your guys' is... Yeah, if you buy these little $8 things, you you won't get mad anymore. It's going to make your life better. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I put everything on there. Um, hooks. Like, I have a bunch of, uh, like, my quill stuff and, you know, foils and stuff on, on these little binder rings as well. Um, I mean, I put everything on them. I've been kind of having to not show you guys for the last few months, but I redid my whole... Uh, program into binder rings with like labels. Uh, JH Camacho, what's up, bro? Uh, looks like you had a fun time in the Sierras, buddy. So they're super cool. 
they're inexpensive enough to where you're going to get organized and hopefully that helps you tie more flies faster. So I'm going to take some of our blend here and I just build a small little dubbing bump there and in this on this type of fly you could use rubber legs you could use uh, you know whatever you want for your legs um, this is more of a tip of a hat to like Mike Mercer's style of golden stones so he's kind of uh, the king Pumba of local golden stone patterns for us here and uh, you know he just doesn't use the rubber legs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more of these wild turkeys that I've that are dyed yellow and we're gonna put in our first set of legs and you can see there it just gets a nice little look behind it and I'll just trim those off if you get really lazy and you want to go full guide fly status then you could probably skip that and just use the the blunt sections and make them sharp. Brando, what's up, man? How's it going? Too much fun. Yeah, the Sierras are always too much fun. Looks like you got some new dudes into fly fishing, which is always great. So you can see I'll just create like a little area there. And this is just uh, some, I think it's pheno skin. And I'm just going to cut this into a wing bud width, which for me on these bigger flies is about a quarter inch. Rally fly fishing, what's up, man? Let's see. Yes, absolutely. Do you know how many packages of uh, Ice Dub Peacock Black I probably own? Because I'll throw it in with a bag going to do a demo or something and then I am like oh man I don't have that anymore and yeah, I have like 10 bags of it not anymore now I know because uh, let's face it I'm not gonna make spreadsheets about which fly tying materials I have um, just kinda truth of the matter so this is our little back wing case here it's really just a simple thing um, it's a heart it's like a really poorly cut out heart, if you guys can see that. <laughs> How do I like this base in comparison to the big stone? Um, I'm going to switch you guys over back here. Um, sorry, now that we've done some dubbing, we'll go back to fly view. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about the base, personally. I have one of those uh, CE Tech bases and... Um, I absolutely adore it. I think it's great. I'm going to cut just a little bit off this guy. And what we'll do here is we'll just lock that in. And you can see I'm going to lock it in and kind of work back over it a lot so the wing case actually becomes smaller. Now this is a this is a good trick here. Trim that off. Um, but you want to make sure you're, you know where your beads lying otherwise it will trick you. Um, so when you get to this point the first thing I like to do here is come in and I'll start creating my actual wing case. Nice thin layer at first. So you can see it gets darkened down, some of the yellow still does show through, but trying to lift it up and create this other thing, it's, it, gets, it gets techy because that next wing case is going to overlay over the top. What's going on? Not much. Just tying some flies, man. So you can see when you come back in and you start doing second coats, then you're going to darken it down but you'll retain a lot of that translucence underneath which is kind of a cool realistic thing it's probably more realistic than I normally tie so you can see we get this nice little dark kind of dark but still yellow gelatinous looking wing case scenario going on so we're gonna take some more of our dubbing here that we've created um, 
and I like throwing a bunch of colors in there. You can see the UV ice dub in brown and the UV ice dub in yellow. That kind of olivey brown color definitely does add um, a different depth and feel to the overall uh, colorway of the fly. Um, just because, you know, everything has color variation, especially in nature. So you can see I'm kind of just building up. And now you're going to get your second set of legs there. And I know I know people dig the rubber leg things, but I'll fish I'll, if I'm fishing two say if I'm fishing two golden stone flies like under a nymph rig, I'll throw one with and without rubber legs. Sometimes the less movement, all of a sudden it's it's not as big. This is a big bug for a for a fish. So maybe, you know, the less movement is less intimidating to that fish at that point in time or in its life. Um, sometimes you could get a, you know, you'll be like, man, they're really chowing this one, like five to one over the other one. And I know, but I know they're eating golden stones. So sometimes when you're out searching, um, sometimes throwing like three different variations of the same bug um, and once I figure that out, then I have zero quarrel about throwing like three of the same bug. Um, especially if they're just keyed in on it a hundred percent, you're just increasing, um, you know, you're just increasing your odds. Let's see, this Skeeter hatch was also brutal. Man, I, yeah, I remember one time we hiked up into, uh, the Muir Wilderness and the Sierras and uh, I, I do ultralight hiking with my buddy and you know we were we were uh, going super 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 nerdy light and uh, we, we we brought just like uh, our tarps which is our normal sleep system and uh, but we didn't bring our bug net and we were just using the little head masks and the only place that was like touching uh, was my chin at night so I ended up with this beard looking phenomenon of mosquito bites and it was absolutely horrible <laughs> so I can feel you there man I I you know if I was like Indiana Jones mosquitoes would be my nemesis um, but so we'll put in our last set of legs there so you see you get this really cool little leggy look You were too fast on that. <laughs> too fast on what? Yeah, well, it's just this like beard of mosquito bites. It was pretty, pretty funny. I think it was like 19 and like trying to pick up on girls with this mosquito bite beard wasn't going to work out. Probably, probably just laughing at me, which is standard, but we'll go with it. Um... So this guy's going to be a little different here. So I'm going to take, so you can see we've used eight sets of these um, total of these little antennas. So now golden stones and stoneflies in general, stubby tail, longer antenna in the front. It's kind of their traditional, their look. So I don't mind having a little bit longer antenna up front. And I'll just take a loose wrap here. And you can kind of just position them however you want. It's not going to hurt you. And then we'll we'll be able to drop them in where we want them. Just kind of more up here. So you can see just the tension of your bobbin is going to hold everything. And you can kind of just work forward. And they'll end up getting pressed out more too. And you can, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can run a shorter antenna. It's fine. Um... Fish, you know, like I always say, fish don't know how to measure and count and do all these other cool things that we can. So, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt you any. Yes, Chris, we're going mousing tonight. Are you picking me up in thirty minutes to go to the McLeod? <laughs> I'll be in bed by like nine, dude. <laughs> 
It's only three shots of espresso. Premethin on the clothes was a big help. Yeah, I've never gone the, uh, full disclosure, never gone the chemical route, brother. <laughs> you bring the new trout spay that I did, we just got, and uh, we'll go mousing. I'll, I'll tie some skaters really quick after the live stream. All right, so I'm going to set this second wing in here. And you can see I've actually worked backwards from the front. And with this, what I'll do is I'm going to add just a touch more dubbing. Um, and then we're going to move right up front here. And I'm going to use that dubbing. You can see I'm using the dubbing to kind of push and angle the stonefly antenna forward, which works pretty darn well. And I'll go ahead and whip finish here. And that's going to suck this into the bead, kind of out of the way. And uh, this hook has been pretty awesome. This 523, I've had really good success on it. And it does, it does a great, great job for me on uh, bigger stuff. Holds up to steelhead well, too. Uh, Deed is my... <laughs> uh, my buddies were swarmed and I, I wasn't. It got my thumbs up. <laughs> that makes sense, man. Yeah, skeeters are uh, skeeters are brutal. I've been ill prepared for many a hike, so I'm gonna use some brown again and just work on creating two independent wing cases here. DBG 1985, what's up? DEET also, yeah. Better. That's called better living through chemistry, right? So I'm gonna fill this void up here and kind of wrap around, and then we'll cure that up really quick. Dude, these extra long game, uh, jig hooks have been a game changer for me. I've switched all of my rubber leg tying to them, and, you know, I'll explain it to anybody I want, but my kids catch more fish on jig hooks. They're five and seven. So, I believe in jig hooks. Um, they reel backwards, drop stuff at it, jump up and down in the middle of fighting the fish because they're still stoked they're catching one, and all in all, really helps them out. So, this last little bit, I'll go ahead and create just the the front of the fly. Swim, swim baits. What's the best kind of fly for salt water? That is a very, very large question, but I'll tell you one thing, a chartreuse over white clouds or minnow. Uh, it's the only fly that I know that will catch every fish in the whole world. Um, if you want to get really dorky, you can do this and it just absolutely, if you don't do this step, it's not going to drive them nuts. Um, <laughs> but all in all, you're going to have this really killer profile. You can, you know, bug out the, the legs will kind of fold out once you get them out there. Um, once this fly gets beat up a little bit more, it's even better. The legs kind of get pushed around a little bit during the, the glue up process. But if it ain't, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anybody goes, man, I want to go fishing. What, what's the best fly ever? It's like a chartreuse over white clouser. Catch stripers, bass, bluegill, trout, redfish, pretty much anything. So it's uh, it's it's one of the best ones ever. But <laughs> so, anyways, hopefully you guys got some cool looks at some new stuff and you know some new ideas for flies that will intrigue you. Um, you know, feel free to mix these up. Like as far as uh, as far as like a little Pertagon style fly, I mean, tie that in like your your blacks, browns, blues. I mean, every color of the rainbow, and then put every different color bead on it, and just make like this crazy amount of variation in there. Um, 
and uh, you, you just can't go wrong. You're going to find something that's like, man, the fish just keyed in on this and I've never caught that many fish and, you know, done all this different stuff. Um, and the same thing goes with these stones. So if you tie them in olive, obviously you're a squala, um, you know, and if you're tying them, you know, that big, uh, it's a little bit more difficult, obviously, but, uh, you know, you're going to get some yellow sallies that are really small, your size tens and stuff like that. Uh, no problem, Chris. Glad you could hang out, man. Um, but you're also going to get like in, in our winter time, uh, a lot out here in the West, we get a little black winter stone. The fish love, they think it's like an extra little tasty morsel. So they're going to be in that like 10, 12, 14, 16 size. So throwing small black fly, you know, doing, taking this and, and, and varying it in every color way that you could, it's going to create, not only you have one pattern, but that you get good at tying, but you're going to be able to take that across to 20 different scenarios throughout a whole year. So thanks guys, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all that we have for you tonight and uh, appreciate you guys all joining in and uh, hanging out for a bit. And there's a new rivals page on Loon Outdoors you guys can check out and, and see. I know some of you guys during the stream were uh, checking stuff out, but uh, we'll be back here in a few weeks time uh, to do a little bit more tying and uh, get you guys prepped for fall fishing. So thanks for watching, we'll check you next time.